All right, guys, the moment you've been waiting for how to rotoscope and Final Cut Pro. <laughs> These corny ass sound effects, man. Hey, but listen, man, the cat's out the bag. There's no way to uh, rotoscope and Final Cut Pro. But I'm going to show you how to use After Effects Roto Brush tool and use it with Final Cut Pro and it's going to make your life a lot easier. It's really simple to do. So let's head on over to Final Cut Pro, man. And I already know you uh, Adobe After Effects people, y'all are going to get on me for not using something right in After Effects. That's cool. I'm new to it. So if you can help me out, please help us Final Cut Pro people out, man. We all family. You know what I'm saying? We all trying to make a dollar. We all trying to be creative with video editing. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, yeah, let's head into uh, Final Cut Pro. Um, I went ahead and dragged and dropped a Wiz Khalifa video that I really fuck with in here. And uh, give me one second. I'm going to go to a shot that I want to, you know, rotoscope. Let's see what we got here. All right, this one right here. I think I like this shot. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and uh, cut the scene or the shot that you want. And then you want to go all the way until the shot ends. Boom, there it is. All right, so you want to cut that. And this is just the way I do it. Maybe you know a better way to do it. So what I do is I clip that. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see the cut. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy this clip. I'll make a new project and then you're going to paste the clip that you copied. Boom. Now you got the clip. It's really small. And then you're going to go here and then you're going to render that clip. So after you have Adobe After Effects open up, you want to go ahead and drag the clip that you just saved over to After Effects in this section right here. It should load up and you should see it just like this. And then what you want to do is you want to drag that clip over to the timeline. Once you drag that clip over to the timeline, it should look just like this. So what you want to do after that is you want to double click on the timeline and that'll take you to another layer because when you're working with um, Adobe After Effects, uh, everything is in layers, kind of like uh, Photoshop. So that's why uh, Adobe After Effects is really dope because you're working with layers. So once you have your clip in this layer right here, you're going to want to go up to this right here. It's the uh, it's right by the uh, right by the thumbtack. But it's the one with the little guy with the paintbrush. That's the roto brush. You want to click on that. And my roto brush is huge right now. But if you hit, um, I believe it's control and then down on the nope, not that <laughs> if you hit command and then down on the keypad, it'll actually make that brush a lot smaller. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to make sure it's green and then you literally this is where the magic comes into play. You literally just want to trace over the subject that you want to roto out. Super simple. You don't have to be precise with it. You can literally just trace over them and wherever you see this pink line at that's what's pretty much uh, rotoed out or that's what's masked out. Um, as you can see, it's not perfect. Um, you can see we actually got some of the building in the back, some of this guy's shirt um, and then some of the car. But the good thing about this tool is really easy to um, to get rid of all of the stuff that you don't want in the mask. So all you have to do is hold down the option key and you'll know you're doing this because uh, the cursor will now turn red instead of green. And what you'll do is you want to trace around everything that you don't want in the roto. See, look at that. It's now outlining with you want to trace everything that you don't want in the roto. Boom. Look at that. Now, it kind of messed up a little bit, but it's super simple. You want to go back with the green, let go of option, and go back with the uh, green cursor. I like that. Boom. That looks pretty good to me. You know, we can get some of his hair in there. Like, you know, it's pretty precise. You know, it's really, really pretty precise, in my opinion, at least. All right. So now here's the trick. So you can either hit play and let the roto brush do its magic. Whoa. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let it do its magic. Boom. It takes a little bit of time, but trust me, this is way less time than going frame by frame in Final Cut Pro. Let it do its magic. As you can see, it's masking out everything on Wiz. Give it some time. I might skip past this or I might just let it play. You know, this is my first time doing this uh, screen record type thing. So I don't know. We're going to see what happens after this, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty good mask. You know, it's probably a few spots in there that's not right. But what you can do to, um, you know, kind of touch it up is you can hit uh, pause or hit the space bar to stop it. And what you can do is you can hit com you can hold command and then hit right or left on the arrow key and it'll go frame by frame. 
So for instance, as you can see right here, some of this is touching the background of that car. So all I would do is I would go boom, hold option, get rid of some of it. And now it's, it's his shirt. I don't know how good that is, but you get, you get the gist. Frame by frame, boom. Frame by frame, boom. Frame by frame. It's pretty easy, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty easy. Even if you wanted to pause it and, you know what I'm saying, get really precise, again, hold command down. Hold command and then down. You can make your cursor smaller to get into tighter spots. Even if you wanted to roto out this part between his armpit and the car, all you got to do is hit option. You don't even got to trace the outline. You can just literally put a little line in there. Boom. Now it's got rid of the space in between his armpit. And if you hit play, it'll, um, you know, roto out and do everything that it needs to do. Now, one thing I will say that I've, that I've uh, learned, you know, based on my YouTube tutorials when it comes to roto brush, um, you want to make sure you get the first frame as good as possible. That way the tool will work uh, just fine throughout the entire video and it'll uh, give you the best um, results and the best outcome. Like for instance, if we go back, I see some of these spots on his hat that didn't make it. So all I'm gonna do is go up here, add a little green, boom. Add a little green, boom. Oh, also another thing, you wanna come over here to the left where it says standard and you wanna click on best. That's gonna give you the best roto. That's gonna give you the most precise roto. And again, guys, this does not even have to be perfect. Think about it. Final Cut Pro, you going frame by frame. It's not really gonna be perfect. It's gonna be super tedious. This is super fast. You gonna let it load up. You're gonna hit play. If you hit play and it's not moving fast, that means it's just loading. So just hit play, let it go through the works. Once it goes through the works, it'll start running smooth. And that's how you know that it's done with the render process. So I'm going to let it do that really fast. I'll probably skip past this part. <laughs> oh, hold on. Found another spot. See what I'm saying? Let's go back. You see his arm over here? On this frame, it gets a little out of whack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go option. Get rid of that. Boom. Now it's just his arm. I can get rid of that armpit a little bit. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. See, now, sometimes if the background is the same color as the object that you're masking out, sometimes it'll get a little more difficult. But again, this is way easier than Final Cut Pro. I'm going to get rid of the armpit right there, too. I'm going to hit play again. Now, once you do that on one frame, the system understands what you're trying to get rid of. And then the future frames, it'll usually, you know, mask out the future uh, parts in the other frames, if that made any sense. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to let this do what it do for a second. And then I'm going to show you the next step. It's pretty simple. Once you do like two or three uh, selections, it becomes, you know, very easy. So we're going to let this thing render out and I'll be right back. All right, boom. So as you can see, it's running pretty smooth. Uh, there are still a few spots that I could touch up, but you know I don't want to make the video super long, and you'll get the gist once you you know uh, finally um, get your hands on uh, After Effects and start using it. Uh, so yeah, so what you want to do after it's done rendering, you actually want to go down here to freeze and you want to hit freeze and you'll see that it's freezing. And what that's doing is that's saving each frame um, that, that was masked out and roto brushed. So just let that freeze do its thing for a second. And don't worry, guys, my videos will get a lot better, man. This is my first time. Like I said, I'm just sticking my toe in the water. You know what I'm saying? A little icebreaker. So let me know what I can do better, man. And I'm all I'm all ears, man. I'm trying to jump into this field um, and make life a little bit easier for videographers. Because I know a lot of people want to do this effect. I wanted to do this effect so bad. But yeah, man, we're going to skip past this and let it uh, get done with the rendering. And then we'll go to the next part. All right, so now that that's done freezing, uh, the next step, you want to drag a green screen, a picture of a green screen onto the timeline. Uh, I went to Google and just typed in green screen and saved it to my desktop. So you want to drag it. Once you drag it, the green screen will be on top. So what you want to do is you want to go over here and you want to actually drag the clip that you rotoed on top of the green screen. And it'll look like this. And as you can see, the edges are a little rough. Um, you can even come over here to a feather and you can feather it out some if you want to make it a little bit better. But honestly, once you do this yourself, you're going to make this look a lot better than I did. I'm just doing it pretty fast just to show you how easy it is. Uh, and you can even come over here, add a little contrast. I think shift edge makes it a little bit better and also uh, reduce chatter makes the um, roto a little better as well. So once you have it like this, as you can see, I'll hit play. It's going to take a little time to render, not too long, of course. You can already see where I'm going with this. You already have Wiz in the back of a green screen, so you can see where this is going, I'm sure. 
So you're going to let that thing render up a little bit. Don't give me no bammer weed. Look at that. That's fire. That's fire. All right. So then you're going to stop it. And then you want to go up here to uh, composition. Add to render queue. Um, something really important. Go down to output two. And then you want to actually. No, my bad. Go to. Uh, I'm sorry. Output two is where you're saving it. So what you want to do is you want to go to um, output uh, module. So when you click there, you want to go to format options. This is really important. No, this is not going to save correctly. You want to go to format options and then you want to go up here to video codec and you want to go to Apple ProRes 422 HQ or I think you can do regular 422, but I do HQ for better quality, of course. And then you want to hit OK. And then you want to hit OK again. And then you want to hit render. Let me move this over so you guys can see. Then you want to hit render. It's going to be super quick. You'll know it's rendered when you hear a sound like this. There it is. <laughs> All right. So now you can go ahead and uh, get out of Adobe. And then you can go back to your timeline that you saved the video on. Let's see here. Okay. And then you want to um, go to the uh, green screen that you just saved and rendered. And then you want to drag it back on top of the clip. And uh, it should be the same as that length because remember you you cut it you cut it out so you know exactly where it goes, and as you can see it's it's, uh, it's on top of the clip, and then you want to go over here to your effects, you want to go down to keyer, you want to add your keyer on. Once you add your keyer on, whoa, where'd it go? Now you have you know what I'm saying? You have a keyed out whiz. So now what you can do is this is where the fun starts. You can make duplicates of it. You can go to the bottom layer if you want. And you can, uh, you know what I'm saying? You can transform it, make it a lot bigger. Really dope, really dope. Um, let's see here. Let's get rid of this. So if you can make this thing a lot bigger, I actually meant to do the bottom clips. So let's go back. You can go right here, make it a lot bigger. Whoa, look at that. Endless possibilities, man. I'll show you some quick, some quick uh, endless possibilities that you can do with this. Look at that. Fire. Fire. You already know what you can do with that. If I got to tell you what you can do with that, then you, you don't need to be doing it. You know what I'm saying? But here, I'll, I'll do a quick little effect. Let's, let's triple it up if you want. Boom. So I know you probably see a lot of people doing stuff like this. So you can pretty much come here. You can go to this bottom clip. Uh, let's say if you wanted to make this bottom clip, um, let's say black and white. Look, now the bottom is black and white, but the uh, mask, but the green screen stuff is still in color. You know what I'm saying? Like you can sit here and you know what to do with this. I'm not about to sit here and show you the endless effects, but you get what you can do with this. It's super dope. You know what I'm saying? You can do all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. Another thing I do want to mention before I let you guys go. Uh, if you do want to get rid of like sometimes like the edges will have like this white on it. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go over to the green screen clip. You want to go into the keyer, and then you want to go down to um, what is it? Matt? Yeah, Matt tool. You want to go down to Matt, and then you want to go to uh, shrink and expand and you want to bring that down and that'll get rid of the white edge that's on your green screen. And Yeah, man, you can do whatever you want with it. Do whatever you want with it. Hot fire, hot fire. <laughs> but yeah, man, hey, listen, if you enjoyed this tutorial, like, subscribe, turn your bell notification on, all that stuff y'all usually say in the videos. I'm about to start saying too. I got way more tips, tricks, and tutorials to bring to you guys, man. Back with your boy. <laughs>